In today's lecture, we're going to be covering chapter 13, which is all about the spinal cord. Chapter 13 is the second chapter in our unit on the nervous system. We would have covered on chapter 12 nervous tissue and cells and how they are going to be communicating. This chapter, we're going to continue on with the spinal cord, and then we will talk about in chapter 14 the brain. So we're going to start off going on an overview basically of our CNS and how we're going to cover different things in chapter 13 and 14. So our central nervous system is of course going to contain both our brain and our spinal cord. Both have receptors, sensory receptors that are picking up information for some sort of stimulus. They're going to be sent down nerves that are going to be processed by either the brain or the spinal cord. And then we're going to have this reflex. We're going to have an automatic output from those different signals to our effectors, whether that's muscles, glands, or even adipose tissue. So what we're looking at here is going to be the gross anatomy of the spinal cord overall. The spinal cord itself is made up of nervous tissue and it's going to have protective membranes that we refer to as meninges that are going to surround it, as well as that vertebral column. The vertebral column is going to be that strong bony structure in the front and the back and the sides that is going to help protect it. The spinal cord itself is carrying both motor and sensory information that's going between the brain and all the other parts of the body. This is where you're going to have the spinal nerves that are going to be coming out of it to take information either in or out. The spinal cord itself is going to be about 18 inches, 45 centimeters or so, um, in length. And then at the max, it's going to be about a half an inch at the max at its largest portion. It's going to extend all the way from your brain down to your lumbar vertebrae. In fact, only L1 or L2-ish area. The lower vertebrae, three, four, and five, do not contain the spinal cord. There are going to be nerves there, though, that we will talk about. The spinal cord itself, when you look at a cross section of it, you will see both gray matter and then white matter that's going to surround it. It will have this classic butterfly shape where you have the gray matter in the center and then the white matter that's going to be surrounding it. The gray matter is going to contain nuclei from the cell bodies of the neurons. And then the white matter that you're seeing, those are the myelinated axons that we talked about in chapter 12. We have four different regions of the spinal cord and you can see the color coding that's showing it to you. So just like the vertebral column, the neck area, we have the cervical, then we're gonna have thoracic, lumbar, and then sacral at the bottom. So you can see if you look at cross sections of the different parts of the spinal cord in the different regions, there are gonna be some variations in the shape, but there are gonna be some similarities that you're gonna see all around. So you have that gray matter in the center and that butterfly shape. You have the white matter that's going to be surrounding it, but then you're also gonna have um, bilateral symmetry and then different grooves and fissures that are in there. So notice you have the anterior median fissure that is right there in the center in the front, and then you will have a posterior median sulcus. So that's going to be a groove that's going to be in the back. It's not going to be as deep as the fissure that you have. The very center of it is going to be basically a hole that's going to extend the whole length of the spinal cord, and that hole is referred to as the central canal. That central canal is going to have cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, that's going to be flowing through it. There are different enlargements as you're going to go to the different regions. So you have a cervical enlargement, and this is going to be an area where you're going to have nerves that are going to be feeding into the shoulder and upper limbs. You'll have a lumbosacral enlargement as well, and this is going to supply nerves that are going to be going into the pelvis and then the lower limbs. At the very end, at the distal end we have down here of the spinal cord, you're gonna have a tapered conical section. This tapered conical section is referred to as the conus medullaris, and it's right below that enlargement that we had for the lumbosacral area. That conus medullaris is then gonna continue extending until you get all these little branchings of spinal nerves that are coming off of it. This is gonna be referred to as the cauda equina. These are gonna be extensions of the conus medullaris and they're gonna be nerve roots. And cauda equina literally means horse's tail. So the way that the strands are coming out of a horse's tail is kind of how the nerves are going to look like as they branch off of the end of the actual spinal cord. Then we will secure all of that to down here in the tailbone. And then we have a coccygeal ligament that's gonna hold this little thin part that's holding it to the spinal cord itself. And that's the phylum terminale. So that's gonna hold the spinal cord down in place so it's not just flapping back and forth in there. So it's gonna secure it all the way down to the coccyx. 
Now, when you look at the spinal nerves that are coming in and out of the spinal cord itself, you'll notice that you are gonna have two roots. Those roots are referred to as the anterior and the posterior root, sometimes also referred to as the dorsal and the ventral root. And so what you're gonna find in the anterior root is that you're gonna have axons of motor neurons that are gonna be housed within the anterior root, while the posterior root is gonna have sensory neurons that are gonna be in there. The spinal nerves divide it into rootlets, and they're gonna enter and leave the spinal cord from those little rootlets. You'll see this bulge right here. That bulge is gonna be the spinal ganglia, sometimes also referred to as the dorsal root ganglia, and this is gonna contain the cell bodies of those sensory neurons that we talked about going into that posterior end. It's gonna be located between the pedicles of the vertebra. So when we look at this view, we have a cut section that's showing you how the spinal cord is fitting within the vertebra. So this is the posterior end here. Of course, the anterior with the vertebral body is gonna be over on this side. So when we're looking at it, of course, you have that bony protection that's gonna be around it. But here we can see the length of the spinal cord coming through. Do notice our central canal that's running down the center that's gonna contain CSF our gray matter, which has been kind of extended out here so you can see that butterfly shape. And then you can see our spinal nerves. This is a nice view of the spinal nerves because this time when we're looking at it, this is gonna be the posterior side, the anterior side's gonna be over here. So here's your anterior root going into the spinal cord. Here is your posterior root with that spinal ganglia in here. Notice that the root itself is gonna branch into these little rootlets. So the rootlets are where it's gonna enter into the spinal cord. And so notice it's going into the gray matter in the area that we refer to as the gray matter horns. So you have these horns, which is where the rootlets are gonna be coming in and they're gonna be attaching to. So do notice we have these layers of protection that are gonna be around it. So we have our bony structure, of course, that's gonna be protecting it. We have our spinal nerves that are gonna be coming out through those foramen, those holes that are gonna be on either side but we're also gonna have connective tissue membranes that are gonna be protecting it as well. We refer to those collectively as the meninges. So with the meninges, the one that is gonna run continuous with the spinal cord itself is referred to as the pia mater. The one that's going to be around that is our arachnoid mater, and then the one around that is gonna be our dura mater. So all of these are gonna have the word mater at the end of it, mater meaning mother, and so pia mater is like tender mother, spider mother, and tough mother. Those are the different meningeal layers that are gonna be there for protection. Now, if we look at this and we take a cross section of it, and we're looking at that over here, here's our posterior, here's our anterior with our vertebral body. First, you can see the gray matter with the central canal down in the center, but let's look at how the meninges are going to lie relative to this cross section. So our innermost layer is going to be our pia mater. That pia mater is gonna be a mesh of collagen and elastic fibers, and they are gonna be actually attached to the underlying spinal cord tissue that's going to be with it. The arachnoid mater layer is gonna be our middle layer. This middle layer is gonna actually be in contact with the dura mater that's going to be surrounding it, and it's gonna be in contact with the pia mater as well, but through extensions. There's an arachnoid membrane and trabeculi that are gonna extend from the arachnoid mater all the way down to the pia mater, so it's gonna have a network of collagen elastic fibers that are gonna go across it. You can't really see them in this diagram, but you'll see it much better when we talk about it in the, when we talk about the brain itself. So that space that's gonna be between the pia mater and the arachnoid, we refer to as the subarachnoid space. This subarachnoid space is gonna be filled with CSF. So we have our cerebral spinal fluid that's going around the spinal cord as well as through the spinal cord in that central canal. The cerebral spinal fluid is going to have gases, nutrients, and waste, all that are going to be dissolved within it. If someone is receiving a lumbar puncture or what they refer to as a spinal tap, what doctors are doing is they are going to be taking a needle, extending the needle until they get into that subarachnoid space. And then from there, they're gonna be extracting the CSF from it and then they can test it for different things. So you can see though that subarachnoid space is gonna be really close to where your spinal cord is. So it's super important for them to be careful so they don't penetrate past that subarachnoid space and actually hit the spinal cord itself. Now what we're looking at is going to be an actual spinal cord so you can see what it looks like when you're looking at a real dissected one.
you can see that anterior median fissure that's going to be that divot that we have in the very front of it. And then you can see the little rootlets that are going to be coming into the spinal cord. Then notice we have here this translucent webbing on top of it. That's the pia mater. They have kind of teased it away so that you can see the actual spinal cord tissue. But here is the pia mater itself. Here are some of those ligaments that are holding and securing the spinal cord in place posterior and anterior roots with their little rootlets. And then you can see that the arachnoid mater has also been reflected and teased away. So you can see that right in there. That would be in between the pia mater and the dura mater. And then of course the dura mater is going to be here as well. So again, that's reflected. So you can see the pia mater and all the rootlets. And then you have this spinal blood vessel that of course is going through here in the meninges. So it's feeding the meninges, which is also gonna distribute nutrients um, and things into the spinal cord as well. Looking close up at a cross section of the spinal cord, we can look to see how the different parts of it are going to be organized. So of course we already know we have that anterior median fissure in the front, and then we have the posterior median sulcus that is going to be in the backside. Coming in through the backside is going to be that dorsal root that we have. So there's our posterior root, and then we have that sensory ganglion that is going to be there. And then we're going to have the anterior root, and there's some little rootlets in there, and there's another anterior root right in here. Now when we look at our gray matter, our gray, gray matter is gonna have different areas. The projections that are coming out on the back are referred to as the posterior horn. The ones in the front are gonna be the anterior horn. And then on the side you have the lateral horn. The white matter is also gonna have different sections as well. So notice we'll have the lateral white column, we have an anterior white column here, a posterior white column here as well. So those are other sections that we have with the white matter. Now that around the central canal, you have the anterior gray commissure, but then you also have anterior white commissures here, and then posterior commissures as well. Now when you look at these functionally, we had mentioned that the anterior root is where you're gonna have motor signals that are gonna be sent out of it. So it makes sense that you have the visceral and somatic motor nuclei that are gonna take that information away from the spinal cord to bring it to the effectors. In terms of sensory, the sensory is going into the posterior root here. So we have our spinal ganglia that are going to be here, and then it's gonna be coming into and taking information into the somatic and visceral sensory nuclei. These are going to be going to the brain for the brain to process. Now, if you look within the gray matter, the gray matter is gray because it's going to have those cell bodies with the nuclei that are inside it. One of the things that you'll need to understand is that when we use the word nuclei, nuclei can have different definitions. So when we're talking about at the cellular level, of course you have that nucleus, which is gonna be taking up the majority of the cell itself, that dark section that's going to have your genetic material in it. Here, what we're referring to as sensory nuclei and motor nuclei, these are functional groups where they're all going to be grouped together. So our sensory um, nuclei are going to have both a somatic and a visceral area. So you can see the somatic here and then the visceral, but your motor nuclei are also going to have a somatic and a visceral. So you have those actual divisions of how they're organized within the gray matter itself. I like this picture down here because this is an actual cross section of a spinal cord and then you're also going to be showing the different uh, meninges that you have with it. So here is the dura mater that's going to be there. Of course the pia mater would be running continuous with it so it's just a tiny little thin layer that's going around it. And then you can see the different divisions with the posterior lateral and anterior horns that are going to be here as well.